Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your main event and the battle of the centuries. That's right, we said centuries. It's Witch vs. Genie, Evil Twin against Evil Twin, Magic Baby against Vicious Invisible Dog, and so much more. In this corner, hailing from Salem, Massachusetts, we think, and coming in at over 350 years of age, it's Samantha Stevens, the witch with a twitch who's going to destroy that little uh, genie. Speaking of whom, in this corner, it's Jeannie, coming to you straight from her bottle and weighing in at over 2,000 years. She's the Baghdad blinker. It's all in her eyes, folks. I'm Retro Ed, and this is Do You Remember? And today, it's the Battle of Magical Champions, as we pick classic 60s sitcom Bewitched against I Dream of Jeannie. Who is the more powerful? We're about to find out. But first, give us a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next retro video. Let's get ready to tangle! Yeah, we're gonna need a better catchphrase. Round one, who had cooler magic? It almost doesn't matter, magic is cool. Both women could do whatever they wanted, like Samantha traveling through time, or Jeannie resurrecting some dead king, but it's how they perform their magic. On Bewitched, Elizabeth Montgomery as Samantha did magic in two ways. She could raise her arms and go all Dr. Seuss with a rhyming incantation, but more often than not, she would just twitch her nose. But don't try that at home, kids. You could break your face. I Dream of Genie had Genie who, besides her costume, he said knowing it'll probably annoy someone, made magic by folding her arms over each other and blinking. That one, you can do at home. The winner, bewitched. Samantha could lose her arms in a horrible accident and still make her nose twitch. If Genie lost her arms or was wearing a really tight blindfold, she couldn't do much of anything. Sure, the odds of either one of those things happening are slim, but we're going with it anyway. Round two, who had the cooler husband? Samantha's husband, Darren, is a madman, okay? He works in advertising, and as such, is an influencer. Very admirable. But Jeannie's uh, master is a friggin' astronaut. Need we say more? The winner? I dream of Jeannie. To quote some famous words we heard somewhere, Tony Nelson is a friggin' astronaut. Round three, which couple was cooler? The big question on many sitcoms is whether or not the lead couple will end up together. 90% of the time when they do, everything goes to crap. The audience is bored, ratings drop, and the show goes bye bye But which got around that by having Samantha and Darren married in episode one? That is one clever witch. Over on the other side of the face-off, in a fictional city called Cocoa Beach, in a fictional state called Florida, Tony was engaged in the first episode, but bringing a beautiful genie in a bottle home put the kibosh on that. In the early seasons, Tony pretty much tolerated Jeannie, while she was hopelessly devoted to him. Along the way, her magic kept complicating his life. In the last year, he recognized how much he loved her, and the two of them got together. The result? Everything went to crap. The audience got bored, ratings dropped, and the show went buh -buh. Don't say we didn't warn you. The winner? Bewitched. Let's face it, Tony was kind of a jerk with the way he treated her, especially early on. On the other hand, the relationship between Darren and Samantha was more natural, and there was no question that he was madly in love with her from the very beginning. Round four, who had the better nemesis? Both shows had an element of danger, with outside forces threatening to expose what was going on in each household. On Bewitched, it was Gladys Kravitz. She was the next door neighbor who spent long periods of time peeking through the blinds of her windows, trying to catch evidence of strange going-ons in the Stevens household, while husband Abner usually read his newspaper and sighed a lot. With Jeannie, it was Amanda Bellows, who was like a dog with a bone in her attempts to discover the secrets of Tony Nelson. While her husband, NASA psychiatrist Dr. Alfred Bellows, was trying to do the same thing, his efforts were played with much more buffoonery, where she was like a stalker. Winner? I Dream of Jeannie. Mrs. Kravitz could be dismissed as a harmless kook, and worst case scenario, Samantha could have turned her into a chipmunk or something. But with Amanda Bellows, there was a certain madness in her methods, and you got the sense that if she ever found out about Jeannie, she could be a real problem. Or she'd have to be eliminated, if you know what I mean. Round five, who had the worst boss? Tony Nelson was always dancing around suspicious superiors when it came to Jeannie, but the most dangerous among them was Dr. Bellows. Remember him from round four? Come on, stay with me, people. He knew there was something off about him, but he could never prove it thanks to Jeannie running interference. On Bewitched, it was Darren's boss, Larry Tate, who was so focused on money that he didn't notice much else, except once, in a time shift storyline or something, he sees Samantha using her magic, and his first response to Darren is, with that kind of power, we could take over the world. I've wanted to take over the world since I was a little kid. Good to have goals, Larry. The winner, I Dream of Jeannie, takes the prize, mostly because we only got to see Larry's dark impulses that one time. Plus, Alfred is married to Amanda, and that woman is like a bloodhound. Thankfully, they never teamed up. 
Round 6. Who had the better evil twin? In 1966, Elizabeth Montgomery donned a dark wig and became Samantha's cousin Serena. In 1967, Barbara Eden donned a dark wig and became Jeannie's sister, also named Jeannie. What's interesting is the differences between the two. Serena comes across like a spoiled teenager, quick to create chaos, happy to dance in go-go boots, and wearing psychedelic clothes of the era. Thank you very much, Sergeant Pepper and your Lonely Hearts Club band. On I Dream of Genie, Genie 2, for lack of a better name, is everything that our Genie isn't, conniving, filled with a dark streak, and intent on getting her hands on Tony Nelson to show him who the master really is. The winner, I Dream of Genie. What is it about those dark, twisted women? That makes them so appealing. Round 7. New Family. Magic Baby versus Magic Dog. No doubt somebody's going to complain about comparing a baby to a dog. We don't care. Part of a witch's journey was showing the evolution of a marriage, and having a baby was the next natural step, which they worked in nicely, resulting in Tabitha, followed a couple of seasons later by Adam. Needless to say, she's a witch, he's a warlock. No kitties for Jeannie or Tony, but her old dog Jin Jin did show up, and lots of chaos ensued due to the fact that he's a magical dog who can make himself invisible. This actually comes in handy when Nosy Bot's Mrs. Bellows shows up outside of Tony's home and thinks the dog is astray, so she adopts it. Deciding to bring it to NASA for some reason or another, Jin Jin becomes invisible and starts attacking anyone in uniform. Turns out the mutt was terrorized by guards 2,000 years earlier, and now hates all uniforms. Ah, the psychological burdens we all carry, you know? I remember when I was a kid. Winner, bewitched. Dogs are fun, but because of Jin Jin's temperament, we'll go with the kid. Round 8. Which show had the better opening? Early on, I Dream of Genie opened with a bit of a narration and clips highlighting events from the first couple of episodes. But it wasn't long before it switched over to an animated opening, which is what Bewitch had been doing from the very beginning. Thankfully, both are cute. The winner, it's a tie. Take an animated bow, you two. Round 9. Which leading man had a better attitude about their magical life? Darren just wanted to live a normal life, struggling through as other people did and making things work, or not, on their own. And for his part, Tony protested almost every time Jeannie did any magic, whether it was making every day Sunday until he relaxed, or having him float mid-air horizontally, where she tried to get all snugly with him. The winner? Neither one of them. What a couple of dopes. So it's a tie. Round 10. Who had the worst mother-in-law? Maybe not a fair question since Samantha's mother and Dora was a part of the show from the beginning, and Tony's mom, referred to as Mother, only appears in one episode. Yet in that 30 minutes, she does an awful lot to make sure that Tony is getting married, just not to Jeannie. And on the witchy side of the street, and Dora spent a lot of time trying to convince Samantha to leave Dum Dum, her nickname for Darren. The winner? And Dora unbewitched. Let's face it, that witch was a real witch. Like it? Final results. Our judges have tallied up all of those responses, and what we've discovered is Bewitch and I Dream of Genie both win, and are both worthy of being Dean TV classics. We could have told you that from the beginning, but why spoil the fun? Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Oh, and tell us who you want to see face off in the comments below.